In this video, we will be showing you guys how to create 1000 NFTs without any programming knowledge in just 10 minutes. You might have seen new NFT collections that appear on OpenSea every week, and you might have wondered how do people produce them so quickly? Do you have to be some kind of genius? The answer is no. In fact, anyone, including your dog, can possibly produce an NFT collection. By sharing this tutorial, I want you to understand not only how to create an NFT, but also how to manage it because your work isn't done once it's out there. Thanks to this video, you would also learn how to distinguish between good projects and those that aren't worth your time. And before we begin, a small disclaimer, this isn't a financial advice. The video is created for educational purposes only, and I always encourage you guys to use this knowledge for good. Before we get to business, we need to install a software or what's called environment. We will be using NFT materials generating tool called Hashlips. First, search for Hashlips Art Engine. On the first page, you will find a GitHub page. There, find the newest code release. Click on it, find source code in zip format and download it. Unzip it in any folder you wish. Next, download Node.js environment by going to nodejs.org. Pick a version depending on your computer's operating system. After download, install it on your computer. Next, install a Visual Studio code. On their official website, press download button. After it's done, install it on your computer. Next, open Hashlips through the Visual Studio by pressing on navigation, file, open folder. Then find unzipped folder, choose it, press open. Now you have successfully opened Hashlips. You can find all folders inside it on the left side of Visual Studio. Next, open a new terminal in Visual Studio. Find terminal menu, terminal. In order for it to work, you might need to install some dependencies. Type npm space install and wait until all the necessary dependencies are installed on your computer. All right, on the left side, you can find a folder called layers. This folder contains all materials and layers from which your NFTs will be created. You can find some demo materials here, such as background, eye color, shine, etc. We will modify some of them, remove some and add some. In each layer, there are different PNG image materials. You can use those demo materials and generate NFTs from them by typing npm space run space generate. After you run the demo generation, it will create five unique images from those layers and you can find them in the build folder. Before you start generating and prepare your initial materials for your NFT collection, you would need to plan your NFT structure and layers order. The order of each layer is contained in the src folders config.js file. You will find a part called layers order. In the demo, you will find that it has background, eyeballs, eye color, etc. The layer on the top will be the layer on the bottom of your NFT. You will need to modify it according to your requirements. Also, there is a parameter called Grow Edition Size 2, which is responsible for how many generated images will be in your collection. Let's change it to 15. So let's run npm space run space generate code again. We wait until our images are created and check that there are 15 images with a metadata file. This tool is really easy to use. However, if you don't install the right dependencies while running Hashlips, you might encounter issues. For example, when you run your node and have an error pop up, you would need to make sure that all the necessary dependencies are installed correctly. If not, try to reinstall all of them. There is another notification you might see that says DNA exists. This notification appears in case you are using too few layers of generating too many NFTs, which are actually all the same. In this case, you would need to add more layers and materials, since the initial quantity of variations wasn't enough to create a collection of unique NFTs. All right, the next step is you would need to go to SRC folder, open config.js file and find the part marked as generate metadata and change name prefix parameter to the name of your collection. In my case, it is BitHuman. Also change the description of your project. In my case, it would be a digitalized version of an NFT human. Next, you would need to find a part called const format and set up the generating size for your NFTs. 
In my case, it would be 400 by 400 pixels. Next is one of the most important parts of your NFT collection creation process. As we said before, you would need to create some materials layers before you generate your NFTs. Usually most NFT collections use layers like background, body shape, face expression, accessories, and different clothes. Each layer has an order, which means that the first one in the back would be a background, and usually accessories are on the top. It is a standard logic most projects use. In your case, you would need to decide what you want your NFT collection to look like. I'm not a very skillful drawer, so I bought some materials in online store and decided to cut them into different layers. My collection will be called Beat Human. It would be 1000 unique cartoonish people avatars, each 400 by 400 pixels size. For the material preparation, you can use any available image editor, for example, Photoshop, Figma, etc. I will be using Adobe Photoshop. When I started to prepare those materials, I created different folders for each layer. And as I decided earlier, my NFTs will have the following layers, background, body, hair, brows, clothes, and accessories. So as you can see, I have all these six folders in my Photoshop project. Next, I would make an order of all those layers, which would start from bottom up to the top. The first layer would be background, then it would be body, then it would be brows, hair, clothes, and accessories. If the order is changed, the NFT images might look really weird. And you don't want the body of your character to be on top of brows. Right? Next, I would prepare different colors for the background. First, you would need to create a 400 by 400 image file and paint this square with colors you would like your background to be. For each color, you would need to create a different layer. After you created one layer, you can hide it by pressing this hide and show toggle button. I have around 13 colors which will be in my NFT collection. You would also need to move those layers into the background folder and name each layer that you created, cause this would be showed in the collection rarity parameters later when you upload it to OpenSea. Next, I would work on my body layer materials. I have created two bodies. As you can see, I also moved them into the folder named body and named them as male and female. The same logic works for brows. I have created four types of brows for my avatars and I moved them into the folder called brows. Then I prepared 10 types of hairstyle layers, moved them into the hair folder, eight types of accessories and eight types of clothes. Next, you would need to set up rarity. You can do so by renaming each of your layers and adding hash with a number. This number indicates the weight and probability of appearance. For example, one would be the rarest and 1000 the most common. I chose 50 and 50 for each body type. For some layers, I set it 100, and for some accessories, I set one, which means they will be really rare. Next, you would need to export all these layers into a separate folder according to the structure you chose. Remember that you should export them in PNG format only. Next, you can delete all these demo data layers in the Hashlips demo and copy paste the layers which you created with all the folders you specified. Next, you would need to go back to config.js file where you would edit all the layers which you specified right in the code. Remember to maintain the order of your layers in the code. The background should be first. Next, you would need to set up the quantity of NFTs which you would like to be generated for your collection. I would like to set up 1000 NFTs. After everything is done, let's run npm run generate code and the program will start generating your NFT collection. Depending on your computer power, size and the quantity of your NFT collection, you would need some time to finish the process. After it's done, you can easily open Open the build folder and check them out. Hashlips is a very good tool. You can use it on Mac and Windows. Please don't forget to check out the Hashlips official YouTube channel for more detailed setup if you want to understand Hashlips tool fully. Also, there are a couple of useful commands which you might use here. You can check the rarity of each layer by typing npm run rarity. After you run it, the tool will show you the rarity data for each layer. By typing npm run preview, you can preview the collection in one image. It even has GIF generation feature 
which you can use to generate GIFs for your collection. Here, the structure of your materials should be a little bit different. To generate GIFs, you would need to go back to config.js file. There, find const GIF and change it from false to true. Once you run this code, you will see that there is an additional folder called GIF that appeared in build folder. GIFs are also generated layer by layer. You can play with different parameters GIF constant. For example, repeat, quantity, and delay. Delay parameter determines the speed of your GIF. Obviously, if you try to generate this artwork manually, it will take a long time. However, with a tool such as Hashlips, the process is easy and fast. In another episode, we will be talking about the next steps in setting up your collection and publishing it on OpenSea by using a free image hosting provider. If you found this video useful, consider subscribing for more educational knowledge. Here is your Bunny Money channel. I'm your host Vlad. See you in the next episode.